I developed like that first, the Jurema action plant. And then uh, I wanted to develop this further because actually, and then I, I was thinking like, why, why do I want to develop this further, right? Because I think like, you know, all the machines that we have in the world, if you think like about machines, uh, why can't we equalize the machines that we develop with, uh, with the nature? for example, because actually the machines that we develop, they are always more to in destructing nature, the, to destruct nature, and why, why we cannot make machines that combine with nature and try to balance the, the biological time, the machine time, so all the time like trying to figure out how can I do it. And, and the only way I can really experience this evolution of these machines is really doing that, you know? So, so then the first, the Jurema action plant, and then I did the other uh, plant machine with a prototype for a new bio machine, which is actually uh, the, the interface. So the, the, the plant machines, let's say, they are more like an interactive piece, and then when you touch the plant, it enables the machine to drive, right? So this was also developed with another scientist from, uh, uh, from Leiden uh, University, and he was, uh, uh, his research is, is into electrical signals of plants. And then, uh, and then, well, the, the, the prototype for a new bio machine, like I changed of plants because actually it became the, the, first, the first plant machine I'm using like a mimosa pudica. It's like a plant that you touch and then have like this immediate response when you touch. And this I thought it was really like perfect for an interaction. But then everybody, when I was presenting this work, everybody was asking me like, ah, does it work in any kind of plant? And then I said, yeah, of course it does, you know, but, uh, but when, you know, you, but I said, this machine is designed for this sort of a plant. And then um, well, I had the opportunity to develop this another, the prototype for bio machine, which I'm using like another plant, which is also like showing to people that all the plants, they can actually have like this mini voltage inside of them. So this is something that we have like in similar, a similarity that we have with the, uh, Plants, us and animals, we have very tiny voltages traveling inside of our body. So in a way, I'm thinking about like creating machines that can operate with such a system. Right, and then came the symbiotic machine. And the symbiotic machine, actually, I saw, I saw a talk from Raul. And it was an event, also I think organized by Evelina and Dimitri in the Ninka. And I uh, got very much inspired uh, by his talk because I was thinking like, I wanted to develop this further, but I didn't know from which direction I could go exactly. And, uh, and then he was talking exactly about photosynthesis. And I said, nah, this could be really, really interesting to develop this further, because actually the electrical signals that travel inside of the plant, for them to travel, they need to make photosynthesis first in order to have the electrons flow inside of, inside of this organism. And something that I, I felt I, I, I thought was very interesting when I was showing this work is because people were projecting uh, uh, a human being in the, in the machine, especially, well, it's a plant on a trolley, a yellow trolley with six wheels. But even though people were saying like, oh, it likes me, oh, it don't like me. <laughs> and then the first name was really like action plant. But then I decided to give a first name because I said, well, it's becoming like a, a, a persona. So it should be like Jurema action plant. So this is in the glass house, and the machine is there, like uh, floating and swimming. And actually, this machine, it's, uh, the idea of this machine is like that the machine can, is able to find this photosynthetic microorganism, or photosynthetic organism, in order to have energy for itself. So actually, something that I was also always discussing with Raul, he said, well, I, everybody, it's funny, this, this robot, because actually, the robot, instead of like uh, helping us or, or doing something for us. The robot just exists for itself. And I thought, yeah, this is very interesting. If you think about like robotics and the, and the development of robots, you know, like, they always have like a sort of a function to the society, not for, the, for themselves. You know, so this was really like a, a twist that I was doing this, I said, yeah, you know, so. Well, the thing that what I'm doing there I'm, uh, this is a, a picture from Vincent. <laughs> I'm collecting this algae in the Vondel Park. And uh, because actually these algae, they are very common here in Holland. 
So when I when I started to do this uh, this machine, I thought like, well, it should be like a a a, a, a living organism which is uh, 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 which is part of this environment from the Netherlands, you know, in order because I always like this uh, this dream. I think everything starts with a dream. So at least for me, and then, then I would think like, oh, it would be nice if the if the machine could be swimming in the canals or in ponds, free in the world, and then uh, 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 finding its own food. It actually is like something very basic for, for living, you know, it's just like, that's what we do. We just like get food to have energy so we can do our things. And that's what like really the basic uh, principle of the machine. And this is a zoom in of the, of the algae, and the algae that we chose, actually, uh, yeah, we, uh, I found out with the scientists that this algae is called Spirogyra. And it's a very filamentous uh, algae. And uh, you have these bubbles here because of the oxygen they are producing, so they go uh, on, the, on the top of the, on the top, on, on the, how do, you, how do you say, like the, the top of the, of the water. The yeah, they, they, on the surface. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so then, so then I started to go I, I, I live in Den Haag, so all this project, most of this project was developed in Den Haag in my, in my studio. Especially this is in Volder Park because actually I came to visit the, 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 the room. Uh, but then I started to, to do some tests. And actually like this, uh, so this is like the first floating device. <laughs> it's very precarious, <laughs> but it's, I like this image very much, especially because of the ducks there in the back. <laughs> you know, you have like the, the, the actually this we are testing the sensors, and these are actually the sensors, which are sensing the, the, the algae in the water. You know, so this was really like the first test. And then actually the sensors, this is, a, I, I was always collecting this algae from the pond and bring it to my studio and trying to cultivate them. But it's really, really difficult to, to keep these uh, algae uh, alive. But actually now we, we were very successful in the, in the exhibition because they're pretty good there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so this is the sensor. And the sensors, they are like a, a LED emitter and a LED receiver. So if there's like something in between these LEDs, so say like, oops, there's something here. And this was really like a challenge, uh, uh, how, how we could really distinguish what is algae, what is a leaf floating, what is a, a, a duck, what is, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what is what, you know. But, you know, this is still like in process, but we could, if we have like isolated all the algae in a pond, as in the same setup as in the exhibition, uh, yeah, it can really like see the, the algae in between. And then this uh, next image, which I think is really nice, it's, for me it's a very uh, poetic, because I, I, well, I think was a, when we had the opportunity to start to do the project, uh, I met Raul, and actually this is Raul there. <laughs> he's on the back with the sun. And he's making like this uh, uh, bubble, this soap bubble. But actually our talk before the, 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 the soap bubble was about uh, uh, breaking membrane cells of algae. So how can we break these membrane cells of the algae? And then suddenly, poof, the, the, the bubble just got like this. And then, uh, you know, it, uh, so this is really like a metaphor for me as an image of this, uh, uh, of this uh, 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 soap bubble and breaking the membrane cells of the algae. How we explain much better than I, than I will, for sure. <laughs> but, but this is like a... a how they were doing in the lab, you know. So we have to like to grind the algae in order to break the membrane cells of the algae, and then filter it and put it on the electrode. And then after the electrode, you put light on it, and then the electrons they flow. But the electrode is like made of two different metals. So in this case, it's like gold underneath. It's like a gold leaf, and then you have the algae in between, and then you have like the copper. And then when you put light on it, the electrons, yeah, they, they flow to the, best, uh, to the best metal. And this is like in, in, uh, in my lab. And uh, yeah, so this is what, what we were also doing in, uh, in uh, doing a lot of tests in the, in the VU, in the lab. 
you know, like we are, like it's very uh, scientific setup. And actually, with this was very, uh, was also another challenge. It was like, how can we bring this very high tech setup, even though, you know, Raoul wants to make this more simple as possible, but how can we transform this into, that to bring this technology to a setup which is not like in a scientific environment? You know, so, yeah, that was like the electrical signals flowing. And this was like my first uh, not so successful uh, tryout, <laughs> but I think, uh, uh, so actually it was like a, a, a sort of a blender. And then the blender was like a layer, so it had like the blender and then the algae in it. And then, uh, so where, where the algae is, is on, it's like a filter, so then the algae, would, uh, the, the liquid would filter, and then underneath you have like the, the, the gold and the copper. Right. And then, uh, yeah, so then there was like a, you know, in order to make this autonomous, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of mechanics involved. You know, there's a lot of uh, 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 mechanics. So actually, what, it, during our experiments in, in my lab there, we decided that the, a pepper molar would be great to break the membrane cells of the algae. You know, because the idea was like to, to develop all these robots which, which are, in a way, working with, a, with the nature, somehow. And, uh, but how can I make this autonomous? You know, so to make this autonomous we really like a very uh, a complex, uh, 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 it could be, comp could be more complex, but it's still like a complex uh, 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 mechanism in order to, to break the cells and in order to break the cells and then go to the, to, to the machine and then shine light on it and have energy for itself. So trying to make this, this cycle. And then I also went to, to Brazil in the meantime because I, I collaborate with the, with the technological university there in Rio. It's, uh, it's called the CEFETCH. It's a technological university. So they have like this mechanical engineering lab. Uh, and I collaborate with them since I don't know, it's like since 2008 or something like that. So we, we are like partners, I go there and I, I show my projects and develop something there, I come back. So the idea was uh, really like to open this project in order that we can uh, uh, make this really happen. And also then I was explaining to the engineering students what should be done in order that we can make all this connection happen, you know, in the best way. So then, yeah, so this is one of the first, the first idea of how the machine should operate. So you have, you have the motor, and the motor should turn the pepper molar, and the pepper molar should grind the algae, and the algae should go inside of the machine. And then the light would shine on the, on the, on the top of the machine, and this would give electricity, and this would be kept in the battery, most probably. You know, and then, uh, yeah, so it started to become like this complexity became that. And I have a, like a video of five minutes that show that I can, uh, it explains like the whole, the whole mechanical system of the machine. So I'd like to show you now. There's a lot of improvements <laughs> to be yeah. done. Yeah. Sorry. You know, it's still like in a prototype level. Yeah. So all this uh, mechanical, mechanical part, it really has to be improved yeah. in order to improve the design and so on and so forth. Yeah. You know, so I think we have really to start the, in the basic level of improvement and then, yeah. Because, you know, like as, a, as an artistic project, for me, I think like it's really beautiful, a work that can have energy for, uh, like a machine that can have energy for itself, just like yeah. living, yeah. you know? But of course, the work have like so many uh, uh, entrances of, can be like an innovative machine, can go to, 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 to technological de development, can be, you know, the machine, can be the machine itself, you know, it can be like a mechanical part, can be, you know, it can be like so many things, the, the, the biochemical part, you know, it can be like, a, there's a lot of, of things that cross over yeah. this machine, you know? Because for me, the poetry is already there. 
You know, like the, the, the machine, if you go to the exhibition, you're gonna arrive there, you're gonna see the, the machine like swimming or sometimes just standing still. Because yeah. like in one hour, the machine moves like for 12 minutes. Yeah. It's not 12 minutes in a row, but it's like, you know, in one minute, move a bit and then it stops and then move a bit yeah. more. Yeah. You know, so the poetry is already there, you know, so now it's really like to, to, to develop this further. And for me, it's very interesting to see this machine maybe, you know, being used for something else, which is not like my, my first. Imagine, for example, if you have like a, a swarm of these machines and they are connected to each other. Because, for example, if, if you have uh, an algae bloom, for example, this machine could serve maybe like to, 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 to clean the, 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 the algae, mm -hmm. and then it also like stores energy. Yeah. And then this energy maybe if you connect them, then you can power maybe your sound system at home. Mm -hmm. And then you can say like, yeah, it's <laughs> algae power, mm -hmm. you, know? <laughs> you know? So yeah, so I think there's still like a lot of developments to be done in all the parts of the, of the work. Yeah. I like about uh, this machine and uh, the solar panels that we made is that you have to realize that the active material has to be only one molecular layer thick. So it's only a layer of one molecules, so one mole molecular layer, and that is all you need for activity. And of course you get very low power from that, so it is, it is nothing compared to normal solar panels. But it's very little material, and the material is freely available, let's say, it's floating in the, in the pond. But because of the low power, the machine cannot operate in a way that you would normally think of a robot, let's say. Mm -hmm. right? A robot you always see moving about and doing, having action. And this machine will, can do everything that Ivan showed, this whole process of move, eat, uh, sunbathe, and digest, but it will be... In a, on a much slower time scale. And of course, for the exhibition's sake, we actually powered it with external batteries so it can actually show you all this movement within one hour because we do not expect people to stay there for a year to, to view that. This was really like something, when, when uh, we were programming the, the machine, this was something very uh, current. You know, we had like several discussions of time and, uh, and uh, space and, and how, how far it should move, you know, so it became really like, uh, yeah, and we had to make uh, decisions. It's all research on its own. It's all to, research, uh, yeah. I mean, just decide how, I mean, if you just have to think like how an autonomous machine should behave, so you actually program it, and so all the computer chips that are in there have been pre-programmed with several loops, but in the end of the day, you do not know how these loops will actually interact and how long you will stay in one loop before you actually go out of it. So that is actually a research that is robotics, and both Ivan and I are not robotic uh, experts. So, I mean, that is very difficult. And I think for the beauty of it, if you, want to, if you want to look at it in that way, that is definitely something that should be uh, expanded upon, right? Mm, totally. And everything is very much related to the, to the necessities to what the machine was requiring in order to to become this, you know. So it's, it's really like yeah. You know, so all the, the the size the size of of the of, of the, the the solar cells, they are calculated in order to have uh, this amount of electricity that we need. This is really like the first prototype of this work, which is like one year uh, research. You know, and then uh, of course everybody have like a completely different idea how it could work. <laughs> ah, maybe it should be like that. Maybe it should be like that. Yeah, you know. But this is really like the first, uh, the first uh, prototype. And of course things can evolve. The design can evolve, can get better. Maybe like they become smaller. But this is really like a, a first, the first. Uh, uh, yeah, but it's good that it can float. Yeah. Just to move while you're floating, that is much less energy than if you would have a car. That ride or something that has to exactly. walk. So that is already very good. And, uh, but it has to float because the algae are floating, right? So it's a very logical step. So in this case also one of the limitations is uh, the grinding. I mean that takes quite some power to actually suck up algae and to grind it because it's really, I mean I'm talking about molecules, so the molecules have to get out of that cell, yeah. right? How fine does it <coughs> is the grinding? Yeah, all kinds of, so you have, uh, like you saw in the, yeah. on the movie, you have like little uh, micro particles which are probably not usable. But in that green water, we expect also membranes to be present. 
So there's these memories that here randomly on these solar panels, and just a few of them will actually generate uh, photo voltage. I, I feel like you haven't talked enough about the artistic side of this. I feel like you've talked a lot about the mechanics and the, mm -hmm. there's design and there's engineering and there's electronics. But I want to hear more about the artistic questions here. Good. Yeah. And if you consider like uh, artworks as a sort of a poetry, you know, it's, it's a, like a living system combined with a, with a, 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 you know, it's like a, it's, a, it's an electrical system combined with, a, with a living organisms. And this for me, it's already very poetic, you know, as I, maybe you see this as a, like a completely technological, but I see this as a beauty. You know, for me, this is really beautiful. Ducks and, and other biological creatures would live together. Mm. Yes, like yes. It would be great, no? Yes, yes. Actually, this is what I, I foresee in, in the machines that I've been developing so far. I, I think that they should be placed in the, in the, in, in the world. Yeah. You know, but it's it's difficult when you get like you have an idea and the idea goes to the paper and to the paper it has to become like a real thing, and then like this the paper from the paper to the real thing this is really like a huge gap, you know, because you have to count with a lot of things that when you are on paper you know when you make a drawing you have like a lot of freedom, you know, yeah, you can make like a, you're flying, you know. <laughs> science fiction one that I only dream about and that's the symbiosis of uh, uh, the algae, the cyanobacteria with human beings, so enabling us to become autotrophic and travel in space and just feed off uh, you know, electromagnetic energy and the only thing you need for that is to integrate cyanobacteria in our skin. <laughs> so the only trade-off will become green, but then, you know, we... And, uh, you, you really you made a step in the direction, so I think it's much more, that has much more for reaching you. Yeah. And yeah, if, if this is already happening, maybe we can start with some lotions or... Yeah.